predators are embedded in all different places in our culture, and it's not surprising, and particularly in when men can be in positions of power that can, they can exploit. So obviously the entertainment industry is rife with people that can uh, commit these crimes. So yeah, it's ironic, but it didn't surprise us at all. Look, the fact is you've taken on these big issues. You did the Invisible War documentary about sexual assault in the military prior to taking on the one about sexual assault on campuses. But you say it's not surprising to you. If it wasn't surprising, no action for 30 years based on those coming forward now, documenting incidents leading back to the 80s. What prevented people who worked closely with him from taking action? Well, you raise a really good point, right? These crimes are on Harvey, but the complicity is on all of us. It's our society, it's rape culture that actually allows these men, these the small percentage of men commit these crimes, but they're allowed to commit them with impunity by all of us. And so that's really what I hope this is a teachable moment for all of us about. Like, how can someone go on for decades, right? We keep hearing, why are we only hearing about this now? Well, it's because all different factors in our culture colluded to keep it quiet. Women are not encouraged to come forward. They're not believed typically. It's a horrible thing to go through in, in our criminal justice system and also you're ostracized by your peers. And plus, the predators exploit their a position of power over these women and they intimidate and silence everyone around them. I mean, you see that in all these stories about Harvey, the way he silenced the press, the way he silenced coworkers. It, it's horrific, you know, and I'm, I'm really glad this is coming to light and I'm hoping, I'm hoping this will finally, you know, people will feel safe to come out and speak and all the rest of us will feel safe in, re in reporting these crimes mm -hmm. and not being so fearful of these men in power. But, but I know, Amy, you said that coming forward is not without risk. Why? I know you, you were citing one woman I read who uh, was very much a whistleblower on all this. She left the Weinstein Company. She's now working at Amazon. And you spoke about her and your real concerns about her. Oh, my gosh. Well, I... Alex, imagine imagine something horrible happens to you, right? And and we all know that even though our society is all sex positive, you know, sex is a very private, intimate act. And here you're brutally violated in this way. It's very intimate and personal. It's very hard to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. A. B, if you come forward and talk about it and then people don't believe you, it's doubly betraying. It's doubly embarrassing. See, if not only you come forward and talk about it and, and people don't believe you or people challenge you or they start to blame you and then people rally around your perpetrator, you know, it, it's this it's this confluence of circumstances, perfect storm conditions to really, you know, silence silence victims. And that's what I'm hoping is finally shifting. I'm hoping that finally, like, people are starting to think, you know, people don't sort of casually report rape. People aren't really making up that this crime happened to them. Mm -hmm. You know, what I always like to say or think about is, think about it, when, when women report burglaries, when women report physical violent attacks, no one says, hmm, you know, I'm not really sure, you know, you knew what happened, or are you sure you didn't mean to you know, give the burglar your television set, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. we get all these crazy questions when we when we report rape, which, you know, we are as unlikely to report falsely as we are as unlikely to report any other crime in our society falsely. Yeah. So it's time to start believing survivors. I I'm very curious about your experience working on this documentary with the Weinstein Company, any association you had with Harvey Weinstein, because I'm going to suspect that you were pretty fierce. You were you had a very strong resume. So did you encounter anything that was unsavory? No, we personally didn't. We were actually, Radius at that time was a small independent company within the Weinstein Company, and we worked with them and their executives exclusively. I had no personal interactions with Harvey Weinstein and actually never even met him, even once uh, Lady Gaga got the Oscar nomination for the song in our mm -hmm. film. I still had no interactions with him, so fortunately, no. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.